Hey, Dr. Antonucci here from the Carrick Institute, and I want to talk to you a little bit more about the Functional Neurology Management of Concussion, a new course that the Carrick Institute's offering to help individuals from all different backgrounds and health professions to become experts in managing and helping patients recover from concussion. We've been talking a lot about concussion phenotypes, and people are asking us, what are concussion phenotypes and why do they even matter? So let's talk a little bit about that. So what is a phenotype? A phenotype by definition is any trait or characteristic that distinguishes a specific state, for example, disease, or any of its subtypes. And phenotyping is the process for identifying a state or substates of a distinct set of dis uh, traits or characteristics. So what does that all mean? So for example, we can have a condition like concussion, and concussion can be broken down to a certain number of phenotypes, and we'll talk about that in just a moment, based upon their presentation and their characteristics. And why is that important? Well, because patients rarely have one single homogenous or, un or uh, generalized presentation for concussion. Every concussion is different. As a matter of fact, if you're working in concussion, we have the saying that if you've seen one concussed patient, you've only seen one concussed patient because they're all so different. Um, and phenotyping essentially guides the office-based assessment of concussed patients that evaluates each of their potential trajectories. So based upon the different types of phenotypes that we have, we can actually predict whether or not somebody's going to recover faster or slower. And then they prompt us to evaluate for all possible combinations. So in the literature, there's either six or seven different phenotype classifications. So here you see uh, an article that was pulled from a medical journal, and they talk about symptom presentations, symptom clusters, and how those can be tied with different types of presentations and therapies. And in this one, what we see is that there's a vestibular phenotype, there is an ocular motor phenotype, a cognitive phenotype, a fatigue phenotype, uh, which kind of interdigitates with sleep, uh, anxiety, mood phenotypes, and headache, migraine phenotypes. So that's how this one article broke down the phenotypes. It allows you to understand that people can have one or more or all of those different presentations with concussion. Another article kind of talked about different phenotyping with a great, easy to remember mnemonic called Coach CV. Coach CV stands for cardiovascular, ocular motor, affect, cognitive, headache, cervical, and vestibular. When I start to look at these, cardiovascular, I don't usually see a lot of patients that have issues with their heart and blood vessels. That's what I think of when I think of cardiovascular. I think of a brain injury causing dysregulation of those systems, which we would call autonomic dysfunction. And also cervical, um, patients don't only have neck issues when they have uh, concussions. They may have difficulty moving their arms or legs, or they might have incoordination or clumsiness. So I proposed to making cervical somatic. So where do these phenotypes come from? They come from a factor analysis of symptoms and signs. So factor analysis is the modeling of observed variables in a population to covariate or to variate them into a set of fewer unobserved factors and weighting. So for example, when we start looking at somebody's symptom presentation, it might be hard to say, here's these clusters of symptoms. Um, this is what I see. I see vestibular hair. We don't really realize that until we take all of those symptoms and we covariate them with uh, things like vestibular testing or visual testing. And then we can start saying, these symptoms start to represent vestibular dysfunction or visual dysfunction. So when I kind of look at patients with concussions, I always ask myself, can we do better? So my question is, can we find better factors? And here has been my observations, and this is what the functional neurology management of concussion course is all based upon. Uh, it's based on these seven different phenotypes, autonomic, affect, cognitive, ocular motor and visual, sleep, somatic, and vestibular. So I, I hope this kind of answers that question of why is phenotyping important and also in, it kind of inspires you and encourages you to learn a little bit more about concussion phenotyping and how you can actually treat these patients very effectively by understanding these seven different phenotypes and the applications that come along with it. We'll hope you join us in the Functional Neurology Management of Concussion. Head over to thecarrickinstitute.com to find out more information and register. Take care and we'll see you next time.